Hello, hello, theatre kids, and welcome back to a brand new vlog here on my channel. Today is a very exciting one, and the sun is out and shining, and we are on our way to, yes, you guessed it, the Edinburgh Playhouse, to go and see Strictly Ballroom. Now, this is a very exciting opportunity for me, as it has Kevin Clifton in it, and if you are from the UK, you perhaps know Kevin Clifton best from his time on the show Strictly Come Dancing. Contrary to what I believed as a kid, there is no relation between Strictly Come Dancing and the show Strictly Ballroom. In fact, Strictly Ballroom, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, is actually based off of a movie. Now, I myself have seen the movie, um, but it was a very long time ago, so I remember literally nothing about the story except the fact there's dancing in it. So, without further ado, I'm going to send you back to Flora from about half an hour ago to get this vlog started. So I have just clocked out of work and I am now going to dash home and get changed because despite the fact I seem to be doing my best Jack Kelly impersonation here with my work uniform, this is not really what I want to be wearing to the theatre tonight. So I'm about to hop in my car, make the mad dash home, change, and then we get to go pick up my friend Louise, who you guys haven't met yet, but she's a huge theatre fan like myself. If you remember any of my content from, oh God, two summers ago now, she was in like my Bonnie and Clyde videos and stuff. Where did I park? Bonnie and Clyde videos and stuff like that. Uh, so some of you may find her a familiar face, but if not, you will get to meet her later. She is lovely and I can't wait to take her to the theater with me. But I found my car. Uh, God, why am I so out of breath? To be fair, work has honestly taken out of me. I was taking up a, I did a support shift today because one of our workers is really ill. And like I said, you guys seem to think this uniform is very like Jack Kelly-esque. So, once a theatre kid, always a theatre kid, but... Thank you, Flora from the past, and welcome back to me in the present. I have changed out of my work uniform, so I no longer look like Jack Kelly from Newsies, but I do have my fun bubble braids because I was feeling very Star Wars-y today. Um, I know this has nought to do with musicals, but here we are. I can talk about multiple loves on one channel, right, guys? Now, I am about to go pick my friend Louise up in about 20 minutes or so. So between now and then, I need to make sure that my bag is packed. In fact, it's already downstairs waiting for me. Get my shoes on because I can't really go to the theatre barefoot. <laughs> Despite the fact that I have seen many people take their shoes off at the theatre before, which kind of grosses me out, guys. Um, so I need to finish packing, get my stuff ready and get in the car because unlike the Six the Musical vlog, we are driving because that's the one issue with where I live is you can't really get back here via train after a show because the shows finish after the last train goes. So it's driving or nothing really for me, but that's fine because I enjoy driving. It is almost exactly an hour away. So for that, it's not really too difficult. Um, but without further ado, I say we get this show on the road. Let's go get in my car and go pick Louise up. Now, before we get into this really quick, I do want to say a thank you to the Edinburgh Playhouse for giving me press tickets for this because, you know, I'm a uni student and I'm literally broke. I mean, you saw me <laughs> coming away from a four hour shift dripping in sweat. Uh, so I definitely work my butt off to go to see the theatre and make sure that I can take you guys along with me. But the lovely Edinburgh Playhouse decided to invite me to this one. So for that, massive thank you. So um, I have made it to Edinburgh and of course it would not be a flower theatre vlog if it wasn't for a trip to Five Guys because as always I'm running late and we have about half an hour until the show starts. Um, so, <laughs> sorry my friend is just laughing at me vlogging. Um, so we're going to scram this quickly and then we're going to get going because I want to pick up my programme before the show starts, have a little nose through that. Um, even though in the UK the majority of shows start a minimum of five minutes late like all the time just to account for the fact that people are slow as. Um, oh, Louise is just grabbing up food. Um, so I'm going to quickly eat this uh, and down this and then we are going to get going and I will pick you up again when we get to the theatre because I'm sure you don't want to see me eating my dinner. Okay everyone, this is Louise, you may recognise her from some of the TikToks about Bonnie and Clyde. What else did we go see? Back to the Future and 222 which was like a whole year ago which is crazy to think about. We've come full circle, she is now coming to meet with Street Ballroom and fun fact about Louise, she is actually a ballroom dancer so she'll know a lot more about the ballroomy stuff that's happening in this show than I do. Now we are on our way to Le Theatre um, and you guys are about to see how absolutely gloriously sunny it is outside. Is this the right entrance? Oh, pardon me, yes it is. Yeah. Going crazy. Um, so I'm gonna go upstairs and meet the legend that is Pam up in the boards bar at the Edinburgh Playhouse where we're going to get our programs which will be super exciting. I'm just gonna check I'm filming because I regularly start filming and then I film for like 20 minutes and then realize I've not filmed any of it which is always really frustrating but I am filming so we're gonna go. And guys, it is honestly stunning in Edinburgh right now. Who'd have thought the sun was out? My parents are down south currently. It's 
and they've got measurable rain and lightning but here look the sun does shine in Scotland believe it or not and so I'm incredibly excited for tonight's show it's a show that I literally know nothing about other than having seen the movie probably about six years ago so I always love going to see a show that I know nothing about because it usually means they're a nice genuine surprise much like with My Fair Lady they don't have expectations riding on them in the same way that a show like Six or Heathers might which has you know a lot of excitement and fan base built around it okay so we made it to the theater i'm gonna face this way because there's actual light today except now i can't see i'm also talking really loudly because the music in here is quite loud and i don't want to get copyright strikes uh because that would be really rubbish but edinburgh playhouse since i was last here let me show you this has this really fun photo wall uh which they didn't have last time i was here and if you know me you know i absolutely love a little photo opportunity um uh, louise is going through this She's enjoying. I'm excited to see Kevin Clifton. He used to be my least favourite professional on Strictly Come Dancing, and since he left, I actually quite like him now. Uh, so, you know, how the world changes, I guess. Uh, but this is the boards bar up in the Edinburgh Playhouse. I realise I always mention that I'm coming here and I never show it to you. So here we are. It's like the little bar upstairs. Uh, we're actually in the stalls today. I will show you a view from our seats when we get there. Uh, but we have a few moments to kill whilst we are up here. Would you like a glass of water or anything? like something that was the water or anything yeah there's free water um which is always really nice because i'm not paying for water i don't have to um oh they also still have all the stuff from my fair lady still up which i didn't vlog which i probably should have but i wasn't vlogging back then so my apologies um but yeah this is going great i think i'm probably gonna pick you back up louise what do you know we, we've discussed that you you enjoy a bit of dancing she's part of the university of st andrew's dance team i believe Yes. Ballroom dancing. Yes. Uh, but what do you know about this show? <laughs> nothing. I actually know who's in it, like the two main, but apart from but that. But nothing about the story. Nothing. Um, I know there's a movie set on it. Oh, badly. So we're all in the same boat in terms of not knowing what's going on. So that sounds like a good idea, you know, successful. But we have about 15 minutes till the show starts, and given that it wouldn't be a flower theatre video unless I was snapping those all important stage and programme pictures, I say we maybe wander our way down to where our seats are. I'll show you some of the merchandise if there is any, and we will get going. So, come on. We are on our move through the theatre. I love this theatre. We are going downstairs to the stores. As we discussed in previous vlogs, stairs and vlogging, it's very difficult. Not the best when you're as uncoordinated as I am. They don't have Haribos. I wanted a box of Haribos. That's usually interesting. We're gonna go. Um, there is no, um, there is no merchandise for this show. Very interesting. We're gonna keep going. I think we're going down this way. It's a long way down to the stalls. Let that be known. The stalls aren't exactly wheelchair accessible. Oh, yet again, they've split us either side. So the signs here say 26 one way, 25 the other way. Oh no, we're in 26, 27 today. Ignore me. Just ignore me. Yeah, very interesting that there's no merchandise for this show. Not even like a t-shirt or anything, just the program. Very interesting. But, away we go. Time to see. Ooh. These are going to make some really cute pictures. I love this. Okay. There we go. This set looks amazing, guys. Okay, we're going to go down here. Oh, we're going to have some good music playing. I know that for a fact. But my goodness, right, I'm going to give you guys a quick look at this set as we walk towards our seats. Look at this! Okay, so as you can hear, some very iconic music playing in the background. Uh, this set is wonderful, I absolutely love it. I'm going to do this really quick, just so you guys get a little bit of a better view. Um, like we keep saying, none of us have any idea what to expect. But this is fantastic. There's, they've also roped off the front, which I've never seen this theatre do before. I don't know if you can see that on this vlog. Uh, but that suggests to me that these stairs at the front are going to be used by the cast throughout. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to take my seat, take a few pictures, and we'll go from there. Okay, like I said, we are in our seats and I'm talking loudly so that the music doesn't get me copywritten. And you can hear me over the chatter. We are very excited for the show today. I keep saying this like endlessly. I'm trying to think of something unique to say. I'm going to flip you guys back around to the set. So here we have the wonderful set. I'm again talking very loudly. I brought you closer so that Mike will pick me up. I think it's absolutely fascinating. I think it's absolutely fascinating. This is obviously some like ballroom dancing sign, obviously. That's kind of the whole theme of the show. But these bits up the side, I think, are lovely. I also find it fascinating that the curtain is come across here. Because as you can see, the extent of the proscenium arch is quite considerably above where the rest of the stage is. So it's quite a 
short stage in many ways, which is very interesting. Am I looking forward to the bomb and the Latin aspects? I'm a personal fan of Latin. I like the faster dances and that's obviously more Latin. But a good ball and like a good, you know, waltz. Yeah. Like if it's done properly, which hopefully Kevin Clifton can manage. If yeah. Kevin Clifton can't manage a waltz now, all that dance training has not paid off, clearly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've heard very mixed things about the show. I had someone tell me that you could film the whole thing, which I don't know how much truth there is to that. Editing Flora here, I just wanted to jump on and say that I think the confusion with being allowed to film Strictly Ballroom comes with the pre-show announcement, which basically says, if you do film illegally, make sure you're posting it to social media so that people can hear about us, which I think is very much intending to be sarcastic, but it does read as though you're able to film the whole thing, so I can understand where the confusions come from. But I just wanted to jump in here and say that, so without further ado, I'm gonna send you back to the actual video. But we're about to find out. So we've got, well, how long? About 25 minutes until the show starts. That's a lie. 15 minutes. I can't read a watch, turns out. And so we will probably pick you up at the interval. But the first half is done. Uh, we can confirm that Kevin Cliston can dance. Although there was one number where I wasn't quite convinced. He was just flailing on stage, which admittedly I could do. Um, and if I could do it, I question the talent, but he is an excellent dancer. He was singing, which surprised me. I knew this was a musical. I just assumed Kevin wouldn't sing. Um, and what do we think of Kevin's singing so far? It was good. His dancing is definitely better than his singing. Yes. But it surprised me. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been an interesting... We've been giggling a lot, which has been very good. We've been having fun. That's definitely been enjoyable. Moving on, we're going up to back to the board's bar for some drinks. We're meant to be at Amber Playhouse. Um, I will say, the accents have been interesting. The show, if you don't know, is set in Australia. There's certain moments where it feels as if the cast maybe don't know it's set in Australia, but obviously the Australian accent is a very difficult accent to get a hold of, so I'm not gonna hold that against anybody, because uh, not everyone can just switch accents like I can. A little flex, I know. We've had Cockney for some reason, uh, which is always interesting. So Louise here, as I said earlier, does ball. What are we thinking of the dancing center? You're gonna have to talk loudly so you can be heard. Wait, definitely the best dancer as female leads who is supposed to be the worst dancer. But yeah, it's but it takes, dynamic. Yeah, a yeah. very, very good dancer to dance badly convincingly. Yeah, it does. If that makes sense. Like you have yeah. to be such a good dancer to believably dance badly, which I find fascinating. Um like I was saying as we were going up the stairs and got, I got distracted by stuff. Basically, we've had a variety of accents, very few of which have been Australian. We've had Cockney, the mother feels like she's American. Kevin's accent, I'd say, is the best. Kevin and then Faze, yeah. who are playing Scott and Fran. Theirs are the best, which is good because as the main characters, they do the most talking on stage. Um, but it definitely seems like some of them are having a harder time placing the Australian accent than others. But like I said earlier, that's forgivable because the Australian accent is an incredibly difficult accent to do. Especially uh, speaking Spanish, they go back and forth. Definitely. And then the other thing that I want to put on is the pre-show announcement. Now, not every show has a pre-show announcement. And when they do, it's usually along the lines of turn your phones off, don't film the show, have a good time. This one was done by Craig Revel Hallwood, who was the director of this show, which makes sense because it's a dance-heavy show and he's a very dancey guy. But basically, it implied that you could film the whole thing. It was basically like, he did an Australian accent, he was like, guys, if you're going to film this whole thing, just make sure that you post it on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of this. So it, it felt like you could film it, which is very strange. I didn't, I've not tried to film it. I'll film the curtain call for you guys, but like, just a very yeah. confusing pre-show message. Um, and like I said, we've been, we've been giggling a lot. It's quite, hard to, it's quite hard to not. It's quite hard to hear what they're saying. Yeah, the levels at the start of the show. Yeah. I, you guys are probably sick of me saying this, but like every time I make a video, I'm like, mm, the mic levels weren't right. There was um, one point uh, when I recorded examples and um, sang a line. You couldn't hear exactly yeah, what she said. It was just the levels of the microphones that the cast yeah. have compared to the mics on the band and then what's coming through the speakers. So it's definitely been a very interesting... It's definitely been fixed. It's yeah. a lot easier to hear now. Uh, we have probably another hour to go. It was a bit weird, like it kept, maybe it's because I don't remember the story very well, but it was a lot of like, oh, 
is it gonna is, is this the end of act one like it felt hard to place when the act, end of act one was gonna be because there was like several moments that it felt like it could be um i felt like that's all i have to say at the moment yeah it was basically a lot of that like, there was only one ballroom yeah. to start given that it's it, called strictly yeah. ballroom it was, <laughs> it was really easy to start but she was like Place, I'm glad I bought a dance expert with me, guys. Some they're, insider they're, knowledge. Because <laughs> they're like at an advanced level. Um, so that would like make sense, but they've literally not looked at any other ones. No. Yeah. So we're going to be more boring than the second half. Yeah, given that the show is called Strictly Ballroom, it's a bit odd that we've only had um, yeah. Latin pretty much so far. Also, um, in the show, she's a beginner. She danced for two years. And I'm not sure how it works in Australia. But um, at British Dance Sport and Dance Sport Scotland, it's one year and after she has to do you have to move up to novice. So it's all trends. So unless she's really rubbish, yeah. she should technically be novice. Yes. By UK standards, I guess. Yes. Um, but she's the best. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah. And then the last number before the end of Act 1 was a massive group Paso Doble. Yes. Now, if you know anything about me, you know the Paso Doble is probably one of my favourite dances. I just think it's really cool, the story of the matador and the bull and the kind of, the heritage behind it. So to see that, like, as a group dance, which I've never seen before, was really interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to more glitzy costumes in the second act, because yeah. that's one of the biggest things I love about things like Strictly, Strictly Come Dancing and stuff, all the costumes. We've not really seen the main character in no, the pop with like a nice yeah, plain dress. She's not really worn much, yeah. so it should be interesting. I'll try and film the curtain call for you, even if like it's just a little bit of it, so you guys can see Kevin Clifton in action. That man has definitely had his hairline redone. Like, yeah. can I just say, I, I noticed that when he was on Strictly Come Dancing, like that is not his natural hairline. Like, I love you, Kev, but... Yeah. The wigs are also interesting. Yeah, the wigs are a choice. <laughs> Because yeah. there's a lot of blonde wigs on people that have naturally very dark hair and yeah. you can see, even from a distance, the like line of their, their natural hair, but you know, it feels, I don't, I don't want to say it feels pantomime, <laughs> but there's ever so slightly something like almost caricature-y. There's obvious about, interaction. Yeah, it's a little bit, and some of the music, like there was a line like, oh, you're singing now. So it's almost as if some of the music's diegetic, obviously the dance competition music is in a way yeah. but some of it isn't so it's a bit unclear as to whether the music is happening in the musical as in the characters are hearing it and singing it or whether it's happening in our world does that make sense I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but that's how I'm gonna phrase it. Here is a look at the set before act two. As you can see, the sides of what I was pointing out earlier, they actually like slide in and out. So these basically create new wings for the show, which I really like. And that's a massive screen in the back, which has been used to create a really sort of great sense of depth on the stage, which I absolutely love. And the lights keep changing color as well. Like this set really shocked me, honestly. I wasn't sure what to expect from a show like this, but it's really quite dynamic and fun. Uh, so yeah, I just thought I'd drop by and say this right before the show starts. <laughs> so I'll so, see you all. Update, I did in fact get told off for filming this for you. Uh, but you know, you've got to do what the theatre asks you to, regardless of whether I want to film or not. Uh, because front of house's job is hard enough as is. And I never want to make it more difficult for them. A little bit irritatingly, it does cut off right before Kevin Clifton and Faye came on stage. But if you do in fact want to see a clip of them, there is one over on my TikTok at Flower Theatre, much like it is here. Uh, but this cast was absolutely phenomenal. And whilst it's maybe not a show I'd be rushing back to see again, the talent involved in putting it together. Okay, so we are now back at the car. We have seen the show. Um, I'm going to give you like my full breakdown of thoughts like when we get back. But Editing Flora here. I, in fact, did not give you my full breakdown when I get back because it's been about a week since I have seen the show and I've been very busy in the process of packing up to move home for the summer. Uh, and I felt when I did in fact sit down to film my closing thoughts, I felt as though all my thoughts and feelings about the show had been expressed in the video. So I didn't feel as though there was a need to make this video any longer for you. Uh, but if you would like a full thoughts and feelings video, let me know in the comments because I'm happy to make one. I just feel as though all the opinions I have have already been expressed and I don't want to sound too much like a broken record. Yeah, but, but stood in the middle of the car park, <laughs> Louise, what is your closing statement about Strictly Ballroom? It should be called Strictly Latin, because the name set of the dancing is Latin dancing, but we ignore that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. There wasn't very much ballroom dancing for a show called Strictly Ballroom, but, you know, we move. Like I said, my help if I unlock the car. Yeah. 
I'll pick you guys up when I get home. Like I said, I in fact did not pick you guys up when I got home. So I just wanted to horn here and say a massive thank you for sticking it out to the end. So if you have, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and perhaps leave your thoughts and feelings in the comments. Have you seen the show? Did you think you could film all the way through? Let me know, share your thoughts and feelings. And as always, if you liked any of what you saw, make sure you are subscribed because there's always fun vlogs on the way. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.